Hello, welcome to this lecture on mathematical modeling of mechanical system. Myself, Lovti Singh, Assistant Professor, School of Mechanical Engineering, Kalgotia University. I welcome to all of you on this course that is Mechatronic System, MMEC 5003. In today's lecture, we will discuss about the mathematical modeling of mechanical system. In the today's class, we will discuss about the mathematical modeling of mechanical system. Then we will discuss about the mathematical modeling of electrical system. Then we will uh, see the various types of models of hydraulic system, that is liquid uh, liquid level system, and then fluid power system. So before proceeding further, let's have a look on this animation, which shows the assembly line for a car uh, where the welding uh, with the help of robots are being done so as you can see uh, this is the welding which is done uh, with the help of different uh, robots sometime fixing uh, is there some sub type of joining is there then welding is there so behind the logic which worked behind this uh, automation and this uh, assembly line is a basic component of mechatronic system that uh, we already discussed in uh, our previous couple of lectures in the mathematical modeling uh, we will discuss using this uh, thermal system example suppose uh, this is uh, the heat treatment in the oven uh, this is the example we have taken so this is on uh, this is the parts or product which we want to heat uh, the t ob is the temperature of oven t ambient is the temperature of uh, ambient air and t is rise so, so the rise in the temperature is equal to T oven minus T ambient temperature for thermal system. So this is a mathematical modeling a simple example for this thermal system. So from the law of the conservation of energy, the Q in that is heat inflow rate is equal to QS plus Q out. Qs is the rate at which the heat is stored, okay, the, or rate at which the heat is being absorbed, or Q out is the heat loss through the wall of on. So the thermal resistance R is equal to T upon Q out. So the Q out or heat loss in this case is equal to T divided by R, the thermal resistance. So the thermal capacitance in this case is equal to Q upon T, capital Q upon T. So and uh, heat stored is equal to QS that is uh, heat stored is equal to thermal capacitance into change of temperature with respect to time D, uh, D uh, that is change of temperature with respect to time. So further so further uh, putting this equations uh, and solving further so q in is equal to q s plus q out here the q in is equal to c into change of temperature with respect to time plus t upon r so as rc that is uh, resistance into capacitance with in, with change of time or uh, change of temperature with time plus temperature is equal to r q n this is the mathematical model this is the mathematical model for on thermal on okay or we can say uh, thermal oven next is the system response this is the uh, in the last example of mathematical modeling 
we have seen just uh, uh, we have played with the various uh, basic principle uh, and their equations and then we have concluded one uh, final model which is which fit for this system so uh, next is the system response this is a prediction of performance of control systems uh, that requires obtaining the differential equations then we have to find this solution the system behavior can be expressed as a function of time uh, such a uh, study the system response or system analysis in time domain these types of issues or this type of problems we will solve in this system response next is system response the output obtained corresponding to a given input the total response in the two parts that is transient response yt or steady state response yeah. ys so total response is the sum of steady state response and transition response so ytt plus ys is equal to y the total response transient response initial state of response and has some specific characteristics which are function of time so it will continues until the output becomes steady usually uh, dies out after a short interval of time and tend to zero as time tend to infinity steady state response it is ultimate uh, response obtained after some interval of time so response obtained after all the transients die out it is not independent of time as the time approaches to infinity system response attain a fixed pattern here is a transient and steady state response of a spring is shown when a weight is added the deflection increases okay in this case if the, there is no weight some deflection is also there due to self weight or self uh, gravitational pull if the weight is added further then this uh, displacement increases system oscillation oscillate volates for some time that is transient and settle down at a steady value that is steady state okay so the system is uh, some transient is there then after this it's the steady state so its amplitude get low down so it's almost stable next important point is uh, steady state errors the steady state response may not agree with input so the difference is called steady state error the steady state error is equal to input minus steady state response so this is input or response versus time uh, here is, you can see this is graph for response but output is here so this is called the steady state error so this the difference between response and input uh, uh, steady state response which is steady state error next is test input signal some uh, systems are subjected to variety of input signals that is working conditions most cases it is very difficult to predict the type of input signal that is uh, impossible to express the signal by means of mathematical models the common input signals are step inputs ramp inputs sinusoidal parabolic impulse function standard input signal in a system analysis one of the standard input signal is applied and response produced is compared with inputs uh, the performance is evaluated and performance index is specified when a control system is designed based on uh, standard input signal the performance is found satisfactory some of the common system input signals uh, are here this is step input if uh, uh, this our system gives the step input or in or in case of 0 or 1 then the input is 0 until time is 0 then take uh, takes on value k which remain constant for time less than uh, time greater than 0 the signal changes from 0 level to k 
instantly so there is no uh, step or small step between this so either the system will be at zero or it will be one mathematically eta uh, which is function of t is equal to k for t greater than zero or it is equal to zero for t less than zero for t is equal to zero the step function is not defined when a system subject to sudden disturbance, step input can be used as test signal. Some of the common example for uh, this case is uh, angular rotation of shaft, which in uh, when it starts from rest, change in the fluid flow in a hydraulic system due to sudden opening of wall, or voltage applied on electrical network when it's uh, suddenly connected to power source. Next is ramp input. The signal is linear function of time. It's increased with time. Mathematically, eta, that is function of t, is equal to k into t for t greater than 0 and is equal to 0 for t less than 0. So, example is constant uh, read heat input in thermal system. So, this is graph for eta t for t is equal to 0 to uh, various time. Next is the sinusoidal input. So this is the sinusoidal wave, which is eta t is equal to k sin omega t. We already know this, equa this equation. Uh, so the system response in frequency domains. Frequency is varies with the or a range that is voltage, displacement, force, etc. Next is the order of the system. The response of a system of a particular order are strictly similar to given inputs. So the order of the system, it is the uh, it is the order of the highest derivative in ordinary linear differential equation with constant coefficient, which represents the physical system. So C into dy by dt plus ky is equal to kx. This is the ordinary system of a system. Next is the first order system. Uh, this is uh, uh, one spring and with a damper attachment is there. Okay, so CY uh, first derivative plus KY is equal to KX. This is the first order equation. So C into derivative with Y with respect to dime plus KY is equal to KX. This is the first order equation because, because the highest derivative is equal to 1. So this is the first order equation or first order system. Second order system, if the m double bar y, that is double derivative of y plus c single derivative of y plus k uh, y is equal to kx. So as the highest derivative is equal to 2, this is the second order system. So this is a home assignment for all of you. You have to complete this before next lecture. These are the reference from where I have taken this reference.